Alright, uh, this is Aero Sentinel's channel. Welcome back. Uh, this is supposed to be a um, three part series of tuning, uh, but we wanted to give a little bit more time with regards to a chronograph samples and you know, give you folks a better picture of what you're looking for, how to use the data uh, that you're getting. Uh, from your chronograph with regards to what your rifle is doing so that way it helps you folks identify some of the data how to go about um, understanding it and then therefore utilizing it to tune your rifle okay so let's go to um, the very first one here and this one is out of the box. Uh, some of the older ones are from uh, on our other phone, but what we have on this phone, let's go through. And this is the Viroc HW44. Uh, it's a pistol. It's our only pistol. Um, we're not big into pistol, but we just wanted to get this pistol because it looks awesome. <laughs> and we wanted to see what the hype is about and definitely it performs um the first shot is 719 which is 6 point uh 16.9 um fpe uh foot pounds of energy and this is a pistol so th that's that's really good and um the shot to shot consistency is uh, so so not too bad but being that it's accurate i mean it's crazy accurate um so i mean we this is unmodified we haven't done any tuning we haven't touched it i mean the rifle itself i mean the pistol itself is virgin like we did not touch it at all like this is out of the box shooting this okay so now, what you're looking at is a 12 shot string. This is using the field target trophy 14.66 grain. And average, um, average feet per second in shots is, in the 12 shot string is 720 feet per second. The um, extreme spread is 15, okay? Extreme spread, like we mentioned, is the um, difference between the um, highest velocity and the lowest velocity. That number is this extreme spread across this shot string of 12. Okay, and the standard deviation, like we mentioned in the previous uh, uh, series of videos of this uh, series for tuning, is that the standard deviation there's a, a formula and a math that that it's done to predict or calculate the 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 varia, the var variances from your shot to shot this is your shot to shot consistency basically okay that means that from your previous shot more than likely there's a chance a good good chance that you are going to be within the five feet deviation 
per second, like five feet per second deviation, okay, from your previous shot to your next shot, which is acceptable, okay, that's, that's, that's not bad, but, you know, it should, it's better if you could get it closest to one is the best, okay, um, but in a 12 shot string, I would expect this to be lower, which makes it even better, it should be in a single digit for this shot string of only 12, okay, so that's what you're looking at. That's what you want to do. Okay. Let's look at the Oregon. Okay. Um, the Oregon out of the box was shooting the 25.39, giving us approximately um, 30 um, foot pounds of energy from factory. So um, here you can see that um, the first shot was 796. And then 811. And this is after we've already made some um, tuning, uh, some some adjustment to the hammer spring, and um, you can see here it's pretty much uh, consistent throughout, but it drops off. You know, it starts to go down. If we want to look at a graph, you know, it peaks. Uh, there's uh, peaks and valleys. You know, it should be pretty much. Um, across pretty linear and that line that there that tells you it should be pretty consistent okay so you can see here that it's pretty high on shot count two shot count one was not bad um a little low but the average if you're looking at it from shot to shot each shot you see each um, column there and that's the line is the average you can see that some of them are not even hitting there and you can see it significantly going lower and lower and lower from that from this uh, red line that you see there okay from that line so that's how you read that data now we made some probably we made some adjustment um, and then and we did looks like we did um, and we did a 10 shot string okay and that's how you become more efficient is shooting 10 shot string and then looking at it okay um, now with the 10 shot string after we made some adjustment remember that we were shooting at 776 okay average and then we made some adjustment and 10 shot string and 789 but from a extreme spread of 57 the extreme spread from a 10 shot comp is actually awful okay 10 shots that should be closer to single digits it should be single digits for extreme spread and your standard deviation should be closer to like a two or a one or a three or even a four but i would you know anything past five on a 10 shot string i would have called that good i would call that uh, so so and then you push that to see if you're actually correct if it's good or bad okay so now we probably made more adjustment okay and did 10 shot and with the shooting the same pellet mk2 heavies which is 30 uh, 33.95 grain now we get across a 10 shot this is where you want to be at 867 feet per second this is where you want to be at an uh, extreme spread extreme spread for a low low shot count like this you should be in the single digits like i said um, the lower the better but i can accept this this is this is acceptable very acceptable and two is excellent that's good that's really, really good. I mean, better if one, but there's hardly um, rifles out there that can be this consistent, okay? And 10 shot string. And then if you push that shot string higher, then there's no way rifles will stay at one, okay? So now let's go with number three. I think that's the one we just did. I'm getting confused. Sorry about that. And, you know, after we noticed the 
eight extreme spread and two extreme spread now you want to do shot consistency or, or shot strength okay now you're looking at this and first shot second shot third shot they're pretty much very very consistent okay as you do each shot you know if i'm if i'm on my rifle and i'm shooting i'm shooting it through a chronograph i read the first shot that doesn't tell me anything i read the two shot and that pretty much tell me uh oh from 861 to 851 and then if my third shot is 861 i'm like uh-huh and then i continue to shoot and it probably would have been a good idea that i would have stopped at 10 at that point but given that my first 10 shots on the previous shot string and this is me filling it back up to number you know to 300 bar again on the Oroban and filling it back up to 300 bar um, and then you do another 10 shot well the 10 shot that I did on the previous one was um, extreme spread of eight and so that's why if I didn't get that previous data of eight and two which is excellent on a 10 shot string uh, I would have only done 10 shots but being that I got that good data feedback I went for the whole um, mile and went for a shot string and then you know an average out of 80 shots I get an average of 867 and the extreme spread is 29 and the standard deviation is only 5 29 out of out of uh, out of an 80 80 shot string that is excellent i mean that is one consistent gun folks um so that's the kind of thing that you're looking at and then you know um let's go to more recent um Oregon here um let's go with uh, here okay so 28 on the mk2 heavies probably made some adjustments um let's take a look 93 okay so um okay here we go so here remember that the 80 shot was a 29 shot string and we got it down now to 25 feet shot string and then the deviation is still five but on a higher um shot string okay on a higher um, average um, F FPS feet per second on the same pellet so that tells us we did something right okay and then from there you try and try to get that extreme spread a little lower maybe and you do another 10 shots and see what it does and actually you go backwards you went worse so now you're like okay whatever you did that's why we say make small increment adjustments so that way you can always uh, back it off or see what the you know you don't want to crank it and then say oh she's how many times did I how, you know what was the turn I did you know it, it's easier to follow if you go a quarter of a turn each time on your hammer spring tension you know of, of course you have to um, like I said, adjust your regulator sometimes and you, you play around with it until you get that um, sweet spot. Okay, but if you see where your foot pounds should be on the regulator, then you start messing with the hammer spring. You set the regulator first, okay, to where you should be getting the approximate FPE that you want to be set at, okay um so now let's let's go to a more current recent one and let's go here okay so this is slugs okay once you got it tuned any pellet that you you choose should be consistent if you if you've done your chronograph hammer spring tension your 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 reg pressure that you like it to be set at for the given fpe that you want to achieve now you adjust the hammer spring to make that hammer spring um that hammer strike uh perfected to that regular pressure okay 
because the different regulatory pressure requires certain amount of um, hammer spring uh, or kinetic energy in order to drive that valve open um, appropriately okay and we say appropriately because you know you can drive it open all you like but if it's not appropriate it's you know there's that's why you're tuning for it okay so here we have the slugs it's only a six shot but again the extreme spread on a six shot is eh, okay and maybe this slug wasn't doing it for for us so we said or maybe we were just trying i can't remember but anyway so the standard deviation is three which is not bad right after you've already tuned it now you we go back to the mk2 heavies and across a 69 shot string we push the envelope to 830 889 feet per second and the extreme spread is 16 okay and the standard deviation is four that is excellent that is a very consistent gun and it comes with power okay so approximately um 60 foot pounds of energy okay this is the 0.25 version okay um let's see what else we were doing with the Oregon. okay this is a 10 shot string um this is the nsa slug at 33.5 again once you tuned it any slug or any pellet you choose should be consistent it's just a matter of now taking it to the field and validating that accuracy on the barrel to that velocity okay and to that pellet uh, various pellet various grains they behave differently according to the velocity according to the twist rate and harmonics of your uh tune okay the harmonics of your barrel so basically the hammer strikes the the valve opens the amount of a burst of air is uh consistent and and it rushes through your barrel pushing your ballistics or your lead down range and it should be uh, pretty consistent every shot to shot consistent that's what you're doing on a chronograph now you go out in the field and that's all you're doing is validating accuracy you first go from 30 yards or meters you know for us majority of our scopes are MRAD so we go by meters so 30 meters for us and then we go to 50 meters and then we go to 70 and then 100 and then 120 and then 150 and then you know even further than that but there's no need for us to go further than that but it's good to have it because when you need it it's there so you want to be as accurate as possible if it's not accurate at 30 why would you push it to 50 go back and retune because just because it's accurate at 30 and then you push it at 50 and it's not accurate well the higher the the yards or meters that you go the the log, the further the distance that you push the uh, subtle inaccuracy at 30 is going to be significantly amplified at at that 100 meters okay so just to give you folks a heads up like okay now let's say you tuned it and you tune your rifle it's consistent you take it to the field and it's not accurate at 50 or 100 well you may need to tune it back down of that velocity because you optimize for for consistency and power now you may need to go down because the pellet or slug or whatever you're shooting may not like that that uh, uh, velocity it may behave differently and that velocity okay so you just need to play around with that velocity to to get you to uh, the right direction and that's the part that can be tedious and frustrating because you know if you don't have indoor range there's variables that you also you also contend with and that's the uh, that's the uh, wind okay um, and that's that can be very frustrating but if the wind is consistent you can pretty much dope for it okay 
but this is now a, a 19 shot string so let's move on uh, 19 shot string uh, average 959 extreme spread of 14 standard deviation 3 feet you can see this is the uh, JSB Hades uh, 26.54 okay and the the Hades as you can see here is very consistent okay now you just go to the field and verify if it's actually accurate and that's the validation that should be the part three of your testing pellet selection is phase one of your tuning then go to um, go to chronograph do your shot to shot consistency and get your extreme spread and standard deviations down and then that's your phase two and then validation is your phase three where you want to check for accuracy if that gun is now accurate at that velocity that you picked to be at okay again power isn't everything accuracy is everything power with accuracy is good is excellent okay if you can have both but sometimes you have to sacrifice some of that power because power normally equates to um uh, velocity okay so some pellets destabilize at certain velocities depending on on how they do with the wind conditions or or you know their their aerodynamics okay so that's the oregon okay and this is the vk slugs 32.8 you can see here 10 shot um 10 shot string six uh, extreme spread two at eight, average 872 um so enough with the oregon let's go with like the neutron star which is the unregulated gun okay um neutron star okay hats on neutron star um and shooting the 33.95 grain the neutron star is 10 shot string and awful extreme spread uh, awful um, standard deviation for such a short number a uh, short amount of uh, shots like that okay and average 817 okay so we know we need to make some adjustment actually it was lower than that when we out of the box it was uh, doing about uh, seven, uh, 780 or 770 um, uh, feet per second out of the box oops oh where are we at commander okay oh commander again sorry uh where are we? okay here so because it did that we know we wanted to see shot shot string without adjustment okay first we did the uh, uh 10 shot string and it's 25 and 7. normally you won't push this you'll waste pellets but we wanted to see what the gun can do so we we didn't make any adjustment at that level i mean at that uh, setting and we did a 70 uh, a 50 shot string but if you look here this gives you an idea this is a unregulated gun by the way so um but this gives you an idea of your first shot is about 900 your second shot is about the same 900 and third shot is on 900 and it's pretty much consistent okay now on shot 16 this is where you're kind of wondering holy cow what happened there okay then shot 17 is even lower and then 18 is even lower and it consistently goes down after that so if we look at the data the curve you see it you see how it was consistent around the 900 and then it continually drops okay and and even more so drop around 50 and at that point we know that we're beyond help uh, and so if you look at shot string 
is 50 and the extreme spread is 139. We're still at the same FPE as the previous um, chronograph data, 822. But across a 50 shot, we got extreme spread of 139. This is extremely terrible. You don't want to get to the three digits, yet alone the dang two digits, but this thing went to three digits. So you know you're not set right, okay? So standard deviation is 46, okay? So that's very high. Remember I said you need to be standard deviation, you need to be on single digits if possible. But on a high shot string like this, you should be as close to single digits as possible. Double digits is okay as long as you're uh, um, doing uh, low double digits, okay? So that's the neutron star. Now let's go to a more current neutron star. And you can see here that the neutron star, 23 and seven on a 10 shot string, we went from 822 now to 775. If we look at this graph, it's telling you something is wrong, okay? Now, if we go to this data, you'll see that it's 791, 779. And this tells us that, oh crap, what's happening here? Okay, that tells us that it, it's, it goes down, just like how you saw in the previous shot, okay? Now from here, we're pretty much consistent, okay? It looks like we're very consistent here, okay? So in this data, like we mentioned, you'll notice that from shot 16, we started to dip all the way down. And then in more adjustments after that, we did a 20 shot group, but at lower uh, foot pounds of energy and we're doing better, okay? Now, if we look at this, now we did 16 on a 20 shot string, we did 16 extreme spread, which is good, which is really good for an unregulated gun. This is really good, especially the standard deviation. That is really good for an unregulated gun on a 20 shot string. So obviously, what do we do? We push that. We push that to uh, the full shot string and now shooting the same pellet with a little bit uh, more shot string, well not a little bit, a lot more shot string, 55 um, shot string, extreme spread of 17, standard deviation of 4. That is awesome. For an unregulated gun, that is consistent. That is great. We're leaving it at, at that. You know, uh, but Again, we're gonna have to do some tuning because we tore apart that gun. Well, I did anyway. Uh, tore apart the gun, did some polishing, did this, did that, did all sorts of stuff. We'll make sure we tighten and lock tight and, you know, validate all the components, make sure they were, they were tightened fine, built fine, you know, that sort of thing. Nothing's missing or whatever. So that's what we did. Now we're gonna have to re-chronograph, make sure we get the same consistency. Okay, so we, let's do a little bit of the commander now since this is what it's about and the commander uh, this is the 26 uh, 25.39 grain 10 shot group awful extreme spread standard deviation uh, the commander was on a previous um, uh, phone so it actually was, like we said, uh, 30, about 30 foot-pounds of energy out of the box, uh, shooting the 25.39 grain, okay? So that's what it was doing early on. And then let's, let's, let's go to some, more, uh, some recent um, shots, okay? So that's... Let's go here. Okay, so this is actually bad. We made some adjustment. This is shooting the MK2 heavies, 33.95. Obviously, we're gonna have to make some adjustments here um, and get these numbers down, the, H the ES and the SD, okay? Across a, 
uh, eh, decent number. It's not high, it's not low either, but 26 shot. The extreme spread is 32. Okay, we know we need to make some adjustment there. Okay, um, and then we did, and here we go. We got 12 and 3 on the about approximately the same shot count string at 861. Um, which is 56 uh, foot pounds of energy. This gun of King is capable of 50, 59 to 60 foot pounds, but uh, as we mentioned, that's what we wanted was to get consistency as well as um, optimum accuracy. Um, but this is what this gun is doing now, okay? So uh, again, 38 shots. Um, 866 14 ES and for um, SD okay so that's what the commander is doing now um, so great numbers this is a regulated gun okay so great numbers um, here So, a 51 shot string, 863 foot pounds of energy, same energy that we want to be at, uh, 14 feet um, ES, which is excellent, and SD is 4 um, on a high shot string like this. That is excellent. That's where you want to be at. This is what you want to do with a commander, okay? So, um, hopefully that gives you folks a, a, an idea of what that um, uh, commander is doing. Um, so, we tested some slugs here. NSA slugs 26.8 grain through a chronograph. Once you tune your rifle, shot to shot consistency to whatever pellet, it should be consistent for every other pellet that you choose and, and shoot. But they may not work in the same velocities okay obviously other pellets behave different at very at various velocities it's just a way for you to go out and validate on your phase three of your tuning and verify what those velocity is um that you're that that's what that's what harmonically tuning is all about you know getting everything in harmony power um air burst uh, valve opening time um, hammer spring um, tension and strike uh, force um, the vibration of your barrel to the efficient um, shot to shot consistency that's where you want to be at so every every time you put a different pellet or slug in you should be maintaining a, a good ES and good SD once it's tuned okay so this one was the NSA slugs 36.2. You see ES is seven, SD is two, at 824 feet per second average. Okay. Same thing here. Uh, this is the VK slugs 33 grain, 853. ES is uh, 10, which is actually bad for a nine, nine, sh uh, nine shot. Uh, string and the SD is good though but the ES is bad um, so this tells us that oh crap well here in our note we put sucks <laughs> so it's not doing well in this gun um, but anyway the shot string is 9 because uh, probably the we were using the, um, the Darko del Orco um, magazines which in the 0.25 is only nine shots on the commander where the factory uh, magazine is 10 shots for a 25 cal all right so hopefully that gives you folks a better picture of what to do how to tune your rifle and adjust accordingly you know um, to uh, you know the pellets of your choosing all right so have a great one everyone and um, see you folks on the next one. Hopefully this will get you folks the confidence that you need and give you folks a better picture and understanding of 
the tuning process and how to go about tuning your own rifle. That way you're confident you did it yourself. You know what you did. Um, and instead of trusting someone else and paying someone else if they did it right or not. So that's the way to go. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of experts out there that do this as a business or for a living. And uh, if you trust them and they want to tune it for you and they're credible, go for it. I mean, they know what they're doing. They, it comes with experience. It's easy. It's, it's simple, right? So um, see you folks on the next one and Happy New Year, everyone. Laters. People on YouTube, you call me a homo But you think I stand by this? Well that shit is a no-go You're all coming one Because what you